Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about how to free up a seized motor. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, my motor's seized, the bike's terminal, let's just junk it. Or, um, you know, the bike can't be fixed, I, at the very least you need a new motor or whatever. That's just not true. Uh, I have freed up a good number of seized motors um, that didn't even require any re rebuilding or anything afterwards. They ran perfectly fine after that. So it's just a little bit of a process, it's not that hard. Um, it's a little bit of a process and you have to do it properly, but usually uh, if the conditions are right, the bike will come out of it the other side perfectly fine. First thing we got to do is understand why did the bike seize in the first place. There are two basic reasons why a motorcycle will seize. Um, the first one is a mechanical seizure and that happens like if the motor swallows a valve, if you throw a rod, if the crankshaft disintegrator or something. Basically there was a mechanical failure within the motor that is now physically preventing the, uh, the uh, mechanical rotation of, of all of the, the motor's components. So it could be stuck up in the valves, it could be down in the crank, it could be wherever. Uh, in that situation there's basically no way around it. You have to either um, rebuild or replace the motor. Um, at the very least you're going to need to take it apart and see exactly what's going on in there. However, the majority of times, the majority of bikes that I come across um, have seized uh, due to the second, the second cause, which is corrosion and rust. Basically what happens is either rain or, or just natural moisture in the air will get into the valves or the combustion chamber and the iron of the rings and the iron of the, uh, uh, of the motor, they'll actually rust together and fuse together. Um, it's really, like I said, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, it's possible to bust them free, and uh, today I'm going to show you how. First thing I'm going to do is show you on this bike. This is a Yamaha VMAX, and this is what happened with this bike. Okay, about 10 years ago, somebody paid $2,000 to have these aftermarket carburetors installed. Uh, they've got bigger jets and they've got see, this aftermarket intake and aftermarket all kinds of shit and had the stock stuff taken out. Now what happened was it uh, made the bike far more susceptible to rainwater and as you can see it's got these velocity stacks here where if you just take off this screen that you can see through alright there's not much to the screen you take that off it's a great big funnel funneling rainwater right into the motor. So this bike cannot be ridden in the rain. Um, somebody thought it was really cool, so they did this. They paid $2,000 to have it done, and uh, it made the bike extremely susceptible to, uh, to rain. Um, apparently when they sold the bike, they did not convey that message to the new owner. The new owner left it out in the rain, uh, apparently didn't ride it for a season or whatever, it got rained on over the winter time, the motor seized up, he let it sit for a couple years, then he sold it to me for pennies. Um, so it was my job to bust it loose. Uh, so what I did was I first I assessed this bike, I found that uh, there was significant water in the carburetors, there was water down in the crank, down with the, uh, um, with the oil, um, and so I assumed, you know, Put, put two and two together and I assume that water has gotten into the motor. Now the good thing about this though is is that at any given time when the motor is off obviously um, there's only like one or two intake valves that are open so the other two are completely closed off to, uh, to the infiltration of the water and um, theoretically uh, they shouldn't be seized at all so really we only are concerned about um, which two, you know, the, the one or two or whatever, which are C's. I l lubricate them all and I treat all the, all the cylinders just the same, just in case there is some infiltration. Um, but you can determine which one if you want, uh, just by looking at the firing order. It's all academic anyway, you know. I lubricate all the cylinders. So, basically what we're going to do now is uh, we take the uh, spark plugs out, and uh, all four spark plugs, and then we um, put some, uh, some lubricant down into the spark plug holes. All right, now that my spark plugs are out, I need to fill up the combustion chamber with uh, some kind of lubricant. This is gonna lubricate 
uh, the valves, it's going to lubricate the pistons and the rings, uh, it's going to coat any corrosion that's in there, make it more slippery, and uh, prepare this bike to start turning over again. What kind of lubricant to use? Lots of people use lots of different things. Uh, when you're considering what kind of lubricant to use, you need, it needs to have two basic factors. It needs to have a lubricating factor, obviously, and um, a penetrating factor. Uh, if you just put like regular motor oil in there, it's a great lubricant, obviously, but it's very slow to penetrate. Uh, on the other hand, if you throw a bunch of gasoline in there, um, not only is that kind of dangerous, but uh, it's a great penetrant, but it's not terribly good at lubricating. Um, lots of guys use diesel. That does a good job. Um, it's really stinky, but it does a pretty good job. Um, so you can decide on uh, you know what's best for you. What I use is this regular old WD-40. PB Blaster works pretty good um, because this stuff is both a penetrant and a really good uh, lubricant. So you just go in here, spray, 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 really fill it up. Um, I, I'm not shy with this stuff. I'll put a whole bunch in there, right? Because we're not worried about hydrolocking the motor right now because we're not putting the spark plugs in just yet. Um, so we, uh, so we, it doesn't matter how much fluid we put in. We really want to get a whole bunch in there. So you do that to all four cylinders or two cylinders or how many cylinders your bike has. And uh, then we're going to prepare to, uh, to unlock it. So our motorcycles, we're fortunate that most of them have manual transmissions. Uh, the automatic transmissions ones, you're going to skip this step. But for manual transmissions bikes, which is 99% of them, um, we're going to now put it into the top gear, fifth or sixth gear, whatever it happens to be. Um, you don't even need the clutch to do this. Right now it's in neutral. I'm just going to press it up. And then, there you go. There's second, third. Just wiggle it back and forth like this until we're in the top gear. Now the point of that is, is that we're connecting through the drive shaft and the transmission the, uh, the rear wheel with the motor. And therefore if we put an impact or if we move the rear wheel, it will transfer that energy to the crankshaft of the motor. It's far better to try and bust free a motor by, um, by engaging the entire flywheel or the entire crankshaft um, as opposed to let's say just jumping on the crankshaft bolt and really horsing down on that one. So um, I start here and what I do is I'll actually sit on the bike like this and just give it some gentle but firm jiggling back and forth just like this and this will hopefully move the crankshaft, move all of the, the mechanisms of the motor, and um, even if we only move it like a thousandth of an inch, right, what that's going to do is it's going to make tiny little micro fractures in the, uh, um, in the corrosion and it's going to let that penetrating oil sink in. So I just wiggle it back and forth like that some. Um, sometimes, you know, if, if it's totally stuck, you know, I'll, I'll be a little bit more firm about it. And then we let it sit for a couple hours. Um, and let that penetrating oil work its way in. Then we get on it some more, wiggle it back and forth some more, let it sit. I'll do this all day and um, try and bust the, the bike free like that. Alternatively, what you can do if you can't get the motor to free up by doing that is to jack it up in the air, get the rear wheel up in the air um, through the center stand, get a couple strong friends, put a breaker bar in the middle there, and really wiggle that rear wheel back and forth and um, see if you can apply some leverage to that rear wheel. Alright, so next thing we're going to do is try and use the starter motor to free up this, uh, this motor. Uh, the starter motor is a really good tool for freeing up a motor um, because it's a very high torque motor because what it needs to do during normal operations is to turn the motor over and um, overcome all that mass and inertia of all the motor and its friction and its component parts in order to suck gas in and create a spark and all that. Um, so it actually does produce uh, a whole lot of torque and it's, um, it's a good tool for this. So what we're going to do is just charge up the battery or connect it to a car battery or whatever and, and put a lot of energy to the bike, turn the key on, and then just on the starter motor we're just going to go blip, blip, 
flip, 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 and just try and create those shocks in order to bust free the, uh, um, the corrosion. And we're going to do the same method that we used uh, for rocking the bike. We're going to lubricate, um, hit the starter button, wait a couple hours, do it again, wait a couple hours, do it again, just to, uh, to create those micro fractures and allow more um, penetrating oil to get in there. So if that still doesn't work and the bike is still seized, uh, now it's time to expose the side of the motor and uh, get on that crankshaft snout. To do that, it's usually the left side of the motor here on these motorcycles. Um, you gotta take off this side panel here. Not a big deal. Um, these are a bunch of Allen head screws. So there's like 10 or 12 or 15 or whatever of them. We're gonna take them all off and see what's in there. All right. Now we're going to pop this guy off. You can see all the shit that's coming out. Um, major water infiltration of the oil there. These here are part of your starter motor gears. Um, don't worry if they come out, come apart or whatever. You can put them back in. Yeah. Okay. So, what we're trying to do now is get on not this bolt but this bigger bolt back here if possible um, what you really want to uh, try and avoid doing is getting on this and then you torque it back and forth and you really put your back into it and then you twist this off and snap it off because then you gotta easy that out and it is not easy to out it uh, it's a huge pain in the ass so uh, yeah don't don't get on this one get on that one if you can you know go and get yourself a great big socket uh, I mean you might spend 10 bucks at the auto parts store and uh, get yourself a really big ass socket and then get on there with a breaker bar I've got like a three foot breaker bar for just this very purpose and um, that allows me to put a lot of leverage on, uh, on what I'm trying to rotate and so the technique for doing this is basically the same as getting on the rear wheel you just put your um, you know, put your, your socket on here and then your breaker bar, and then you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Nice, steady, even pressure. I would really avoid getting on it and like jumping on it or kicking it with your foot. Um, just go back and forth, jiggle it. Nice, steady, gentle, even pressure until it busts free. Uh, usually this does the trick. I mean, this is sort of last case scenario. This almost always does the trick. If not, well, you gotta take the, the motor apart, you know. All you did was you wasted an afternoon diagnosing your bike. There are worse ways to spend an afternoon. Um, but yeah, you know, if, if you can't get it this way, now it's time to take the bike apart. Oh, remember, you're in neutral now. So we were in fifth gear before when we were doing this, now you gotta put it back in neutral. All right, forgot to say that, all right. So, Hooray, you got your bike freed up. Good for you. What do we do now? Um, basically, we're going to uh, just change the oil and the filter, turn the bike over a bunch of times, try and get it to run, you know, fix those carbs or whatever and try and get the thing to run. Um, once it runs, uh, and once you start it running, you know, run it for maybe 15, 20 minutes, change the oil again. Uh, you're going to have a whole bunch of shit down in your sump 
uh, and all dispersed all over your motor and you really don't want that to be uh, to be running around your motor for long so we're gonna change it out again change the filter out again really get this stuff really nice and clean uh, before you go off and sprinting around on it if you want to do a compression test now that you have circulated some good oil through um, you got nice clean oil and your bikes running sure go for it you know you may have lost some compression probably not that much um, if you did lose a considerable amount of compression well now it's up to you do you just ride the piss out of it or do you rebuild it um, personally I just ride the piss out of it but that's just me um, yeah so it's totally up to you so next time you see on Craigslist or whatever oh we got a motorcycle that's been sitting 15 years seized motor I'm gonna give it to you for 50 bucks think about it it's not as far out of your reach as you might have thought.